we are thankful to the Almighty God that uh, you all have seen fit to come back out again tonight, and we certainly want to continue to pray for uh, the pretty sizable group that, of ladies that have, are on a cruise at this time, and word has it uh, that they will be back on tomorrow, Lord willing. Is that right, husbands? Your wife's on a cruise to come back tomorrow? All you're just smiling. You're like, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> so we are thankful for all of you that are here, and we want to continually encourage you through a series of lessons, and these lessons are invasive. When you think about a medical procedure that is invasive, you got to get to the source. You got to find out where it hurts. You may have a headache, but they may, but the source may be something else, something much deeper. And so we got a lot of saints of God that got headaches. But see, some of these headaches are scheduled. Sundays and Wednesday. And whenever some work needs to be done, I got a headache. You know, it used to be this old saying, and, you know, married folks, this is a married folk type line. You know, it's like, she got a headache. Y'all with me, brothers? <laughs> so having said that, I want to make sure that we understand the goal of these lessons is for all of us to develop personally. It's not, and, and again, and through personal growth, there's got to be some personal uh, conviction. Conviction's the word. The word of God's got to prick our hearts. And as we said on last Sunday night, as we'll continue to say, and if you look at the turn the Bible to Romans 10 and verse 17, let me give you that. Let me give you that scripture. because I want you to <clears throat> just make sure you see what I'm saying. Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. And oftentimes in the context of plan of salvation, we talk about faith, the necessity of faith. Hebrews 11 and one, we get that without faith, it's impossible. Hebrews 11, six, impossible to please God. But now where does faith come from? Now we know faith is a dependence. Faith is a reliance. Faith is trust. Faith is confidence. Faith, by basic definition, is a belief. What do you have faith in? Whom do you have faith in? And we have to be honest with ourselves. Can the Lord's church trust you? And we let it sit right there. Can the Lord's, trust, Lord's church, excuse me, trust you as your job trusts you. Do you have poor attendance on your job? Some have immaculate attendance on their job, but the, the church attendance doesn't match that. And so the reason we say that is those are easy comparatives. And so why do I take you to Romans 10 and verse 17? The Bible says, Paul writing to the church of Christ at Rome, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so we recognize contextually, he's talking about those coming to Christ, hearing the word of God, having, having to obey the gospel. So when you hear, see that, those two words, so then, go back to verse 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah, or Isaiah's Greek, Isaiah is referring to, saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So belief, faith. So do we believe the message of God? If we believe the message of God, not only is it effective when we first hear it to cause us to be convicted, to obey the gospel, but that present participle, the ongoing action, so then faith cometh by hearing. So every time a child of God hears the word of God, what should it do? Stir us up. Back to the gardening example. It's like turning over the dirt. You turn it over, you see that darker, rich soil, right? And so as we turn over that dirt, we can then, there's room for growth. So if we are to develop, it can't be that old dirt that hasn't been watered. Amen. Weeds growing around it. We're saying, and you know we, what happens? That, and, not, and there's nothing wrong with asking for prayer. Let me be clear. But when you got weeds growing around you, and some of those weeds, we go to the, uh, we, we are, it's a company we keep. The pattern of behavior we have. Then we say, church, y'all pray for me. Nothing wrong with asking for prayer. But what are you doing? And so, saints, the series of lessons, again, is to stir us up. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. May we be, are we ready to continue to cultivate that dirt? When I say the dirt, the soil of our heart, fertile ground. See where I'm pointing? Fertile ground. And so, again, those of you that are on Zoom, uh, for those that are sick and afflicted, pray for Lexi. She had a massive toothache last night. Baby girl just cried herself to sleep. You know, that's a helpless feeling as a daddy. So feeling a little bit better today. And Chantel's on, and I say nurse, but she's like, no, I'm a doctor. I said, oh, excuse me, Sister Nelson. She's on doctor duty. Don't, again, doctor duty. 
So for those that are sick and afflicted, we look forward to seeing you again. For those that have just made it a habit, let's call it what it is, just to just turn on the computer and sit back and, I mean, just listen to Brother Gail. No. No, you need to be here. Amen, saints? That's an encouraging amen, not a condemning amen. Because again, then you turn off that computer, get in your car, and you drive to work. See, that's, that's the kind of stuff we're talking about. Cultivate that dirt. Cultivate that soil. Let's do better. So tonight, for a few minutes, having said that, endless relay. We're going to talk about that relay. For those who are here this morning, uh, you recognize where we're going with endless relay. We want to add another leg to the relay. 2 Timothy 2 and 2, Paul writing to his son in the faith, Timothy, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. He said, what I've taught you, what you've seen me do, my pattern of behavior, you've seen it, and others have seen it as well, young man, my son in the faith. The same, that pattern of behavior, that faithfulness to God, the commitment to the word, the same, you commit, you entrust, you charge other men, not just any men, to faithful men. Amen, brethren. Who shall be able to teach others also? There's a relay right there. And so, we, as we said this morning, we'll stick with the same three Ps, but I'm going to add a P tonight. You know, it's personal. We need to prepare personally. Make sure I am ready. Put your, put, use your own eye. Don't say, well, she needs to be ready. He needs to be ready. I need to be prepared to teach the gospel. I need to be prepared to serve in a local congregation. So it, make it personal. What can I do? A personal pronoun. Prepare because it's a perpetual nature in terms of leadership. And we talk about leadership. The family is a part of that. Brothers and sisters, as we move forward and we had some encouraging, had an encouraging brothers meeting today as we prepared for an upcoming event. But as part of that, we just talked to brothers about encouraging future leaders, current leaders, future elders and deacons. And your family comes along with that. Your family can be raggedy and you're a deacon or an elder. Amen. You won't qualify. There's brothers who aspire to be, but your family's got to be right. It's part of the package. It's a package deal. And so this perpetual leadership, let me give you another P, and I'll put it on the, probably next week, Lord willing, uh, propagate, propagate, P-R-O-P-A-G-A-T-E, P-R-O-P-A-G-A-T-E, propagate. That means to allow something to continue, to propagate. So if we're going to take this thing personally, personal evangelism, personal development, personal commitment, folks, this is personal. There's an old saying, this ain't personal, it's business where we just kind of go through the motions. Some of us have made church just more like a, just a transaction. It's Sunday. I therefore show up. I sit down. Now you, nobody's going to have to call me because I checked the box. I am out. Have a great week. God bless you. It's personal. Spend a little time. Take a little time. Get to know the saints. Preparing ourselves for the growth and work in the Lord's church. And a perpetual leadership, elders, not just elders and deacons and preachers. We're talking about all of us can lead someone to Christ. The leadership structure in the Lord's church is clear. And brothers and sisters, I think it's Christian Chronicle. I'm the yeah, Christian Chronicle. Three page, three page article on women leading in the Lord's church. No. They're not taking up. They don't take a position unless I got to read it again. But they're just reporting. It's like just giving a news report. This is what's happening. We got to condemn that. We have to condemn instrumental music in the Lord's church. We got to condemn, you know, praise teams. We have to condemn things that are all outside of the realm of Scripture. And that's going to take some courage. And so having so propagate again for your notes. Y'all get this, you know, this Sunday evening crowd. Y'all always get the, be the better stuff. You know, probably y'all can call somebody and say, do you remember what propagate means? Oh, no, I didn't. That's right. You weren't here then. Don't do that. Uh, you weren't here on Sunday night. But propagate means to cause to continue. The Lord's church will continue. Daniel 2, verse 44, In the days of these kings shall Lord God of heaven set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. The church is going to, so that by its very design, the church of Christ will propagate, will continue. But what we do inherent in us, members in particular, we all need to do what's necessary so that we continue to be faithful. What did Jesus say? Be thou faithful until yeah. So the church is going to continue. Will we be there with it? So having said that, you know, just a quick reminder, a few reminder slides before we get into the meat of our lesson tonight. Remember uh, that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. In other words, just again, for quick review, we recognize that children of God, we, should, we need to be fearless. It's going to take some courage. It's going to actually take some courage, saints. 
we have to get to the point where we're not more so concerned about what people think. You're going to upset some people. Get ready for it. We got to be fearless. We got to be strong. Our strength comes through the word of God. When I preach the word of God, people say, Yo, you're a bold preacher. I'm just preaching the word. It's the word that's powerful. I'm a messenger. But I can't get up here and act like, you know, no, you know, the Bible. No, no, no. Preach it. Book, chapter, and verse. You have a problem with it? There's things I may say to people like, oh, that's a little uncomfortable, Brother Gail. Do you need to change that? No, that's the word that the Bible says. Faith, I believe in the Bible. I'm telling you the Bible. That's why you have book, chapter, and verse. So now you can make your own decision. Because when I read the Bible, there is no doubt the definition of marriage. I don't need to look at political polls. I don't need to look at what people are saying. You know, marriage, love who you want to love. That's your individual right. But I tell you what, if you believe in God, the Bible lets me know what the marriage between a man and a woman. That's what the Bible says. Amen. I'm going to look right in that camera. That's what the Bible says. You don't believe that? That's on you. I can still be kind to you, and I will be. I can be hospitable, and I will be. But we got to stand on the word, on God's word. So that fearlessness, we got to be strong, but we got to be loving. Saints, we got to, I reminded you all this last week, please make sure we stay loving. See, the fire and brimstone, and again, I understand it. I grew up hearing it. And we got to stand on God's word, but let's make sure we don't forget our humanity as well. You know, we, we, we don't want to be spiritual police, just teach people the gospel. But the, the end, the avenue, the strategy is be kind to people. They will be more inclined to maybe sit down and study the word of God with you. Let's, let's remember that. So be loving. In Philippians 2, verses 1 through 3, read it this morning. We won't go there tonight, but we talked about just being like-minded on one accord but esteem others better than yourself. I work with a lot of people that are not members of Lord's Church, and I'm sure you, you, we all come into contact, maybe even some in your family, some in our family. Let's make sure we stay loving. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So if we come across as, oh, my, oh, what? Oh, 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 what? Oh, sinner, please, stop. <laughs> Don't look down on anybody, amen. I look down on anybody. So again, this is as children of God, this is gonna help us and help people see us as human beings. I'll come into a contact with a lot of children of God. I, I, I'm reminding saints. I'm reminding a lot of leaders around the country. When they invite me to come speak at places, I remind people like, okay, make sure you yeah, know the word, but make sure you have a little bit of humanity too. There's a whole lot of spiritual robots in the Lord's church, robots. It's almost like we're just computer. Good, God bless you. How are you today? Come on, that's fake, folks. Kids pick up on that. We wonder why we're losing some of our young people. We don't need to bring in praise teams. We don't need to bring in all this, all this stuff to entertain them, teach them the word and train them in that. Amen. Then they grow up being strong in the Lord. But see, some congregations want to just go ahead. Let's just, let's, I'm going to say it. Let's dumb it down. Let's make it entertaining. Make it attractive. No, this is attractive is enough for me. This is a, let's teach them the word. That's what impressed me as a little boy in Ohio. I, it was impressive to see these men saying, do you, do you know about this? No, I don't. Turn your Bible here. Sometimes they quote it. Sometimes I'm thinking, that's what it says here, what that man is saying. So teach our kids the word. So we got to be loving and we got to be sound. So when Paul talks to Timothy, what he's talking about, you know, when he says, what you've heard of me and seen among many witnesses and heard of me among many witnesses, rather, the same commit to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. We are all in this relay. We talked about this morning. I wanted to add a little bit of a few notes here to help you with your understanding. There's a continuous cycle of learning and teaching. Student, teacher, student, teacher. None of us graduate from Christianity. And so having said that, I reminded everybody of the relay that my coach put us in. Everybody lined up. And at some point, someone was always in the lead at the head of the line. We're running. Gail, go. I would have to sprint to the front. Get to the lead and not keep sprinting. God knows we'd have passed out. Then you set a pace. Everybody behind me. Maybe it's a for 400 meters. I don't know whatever distance the coach. He just do it randomly. Rick, go. Rick, pop out. Run to the front. He takes the lead. We all got to stay in line. So we all had an opportunity in that relay. We're all going in the same direction. We're all keeping up. And it's amazing how much how much mileage we put in. Doing what's called the endless relay. What's your application with the child in the Lord's church? The application is this. Every one of us needs to stay in line. Stay in our place. Every one of us needs to be ready when our name is called to, to run, to lead, to serve. 
because in this relay, you know, some of you can relate to a relay. Paris Olympics coming up. One of the things I love watching is track and field, especially in Olympic games, especially the relays, because one person may be uh, a little bit slower than the other, the other team, and they hand that baton off and somebody else catches up. But we got to be willing to pass that baton. We have to pass the baton to someone else. Turn your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians 16. Let me run over there myself as well. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Let me see what I want. I think I want verse 13. 1 Corinthians cha chapter 16. Because see, we, we got to understand something. As, as we think about the word of God, that's what I want. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. And the verse is 13. Because see, one of the things that's interesting about a baton handoff, and for those of you that ran track, understand track, you know, because... Again, when we would practice, you'd run it and they'd say, stick, and your hand goes back, you get it, and you take off running. But sometimes they would drop the baton. Sometimes they would they miss the hand. Some, the timing could be off, but we got to be willing to pass the baton. I'm going to get to that in a minute. That's going to be our, our central point tonight. But some brothers, I got to start, I got to talk to the brothers for a minute, have taken the scripture very literally. Too literally. <laughs> what do you mean, brother? Because we, we can mistranslate this if we look at the word, that Q word. What do you mean with the key word? Read the Bible. Watch ye. Stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Some men are like, I'm just going to do what the Bible says. I quit. <laughs> be strong. Let me read it by translation now. Watch. Be alert. Be ready for that baton handoff, if you will. I'm going to give you some application as well. Imagine being on a relay and you're not paying attention. We got men in Lord's church that aren't paying attention. There's something needs to be done. And you, I'm just sitting here. I'm good. I'm here. Bruh. Something. Watch. Stand fast where? In the faith. Keep believing. Keep trusting. So this applies to y'all too now. Keep trusting God. Keep depending on God. Because I hear sisters say many times, brother, y'all pray for me. I'm just going through so much stuff. What are you doing, sister? What are you doing about it? It's good. We're going to pray for you. But what are you doing about it? I'm asking y'all to pray for me. Okay. Are you in Bible class? So you can learn some scriptures. Well, you know, I'm going through stuff. See, that's that's where the y'all see what just happened there. There's a disconnect. May we see the disconnect in the relay. You want somebody else to run the race. You wanted somebody else to have that baton in their hand. But then when I'm going to make it personal, when I'm going through something or if you're going through something, stay in the race. Daryl got you. Lyman got you. So Dadell got you. We're all in this together. So we, I'm wondering how many of you here aren't going through something. So what makes Gail so special that I'm going through something? I'm going to just quit for a minute. But y'all pray for me. I see y'all when I work it out. Watch. First Corinthians 16, 13. Let's bring it home. Watch. Watch ye. Be aware. Stay alert. Stand fast in the faith. Stand fast means be steadfast. When you stand fast, you're not variable. You're, you're holding steady. There's a term in track and field. Let's stay with track and field context. Stay in your lane. You know what happens? For those of you that understand track, there, you, you got eight lanes on an olympic size track. And if you step out of your lane, you are dq You know what dq would means? Not Dairy Queen. You're disqualified. So stay in your lane. If I step out of my lane, Brother Larry, imagine this. I step out of my lane saying, see, I'm going to step over here. Y'all keep running, but I just want to let y'all know I'm going through stuff. Y'all pray for me. Stay in the lane. Keep running. It may be a tough lap. Maybe 2023 was a tough lap for you. 2024, maybe you're going through a tough lap. A lap. There's something to the wind. There's some resistance. You know, you got people maybe bumping you, but you stay in your lane and keep going. Stand, watch. Paul is saying, watch ye. Stand fast in the faith. Keep on running. Quit you like men means be brave. Doesn't mean stop. Quit. You look up the word quit in Webster's Dictionary. It's going to say to cease, to participate. Clearly, that's not what the Bible is teaching us. Translation in the Greek is be brave. There's back to strength, back to being courageous. Watch alertness. Stand fast in the faith, courage, strength. Amen. Standing fast in the faith means to be loving as well. Because what does that mean to stand fast in the faith? Whatever it takes to me as I show my belief and trust in God. Quit ye like men. Be strong. Be brave. And so having said that, our main question tonight is are we coachable? Are we coachable? 
See, when Paul says to his son in the faith, Timothy, now I have taught you, you find some reliable, faithful men who are sending past in the faith. Commit to them that they can teach others also. Remember the cycle. Let's turn a few scriptures. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5. First question tonight. I'll give you about four questions. I mean, this lesson will be yours. We need to be willing to be taught by others. A best question should be, are we willing to be taught by others? Are we willing to be taught by others? I don't know if you ever come across somebody, you can't tell them anything. How comfortable is that conversation? You don't need to answer a lot. I already know. It's painful. Don't be the one where nobody can tell you anything. We've got a whole lot of uh, what I call the academicians. That's a, you know, academician like a professor. We have a whole lot of academicians in the church. It's going to be invasive again. Be ready. See, Christianity is not some academic exercise. I heard Brother Winkler mention that he made this statement when we were in Kentucky a couple weeks back. He said, brothers, let's be careful that we don't make this an academic exercise. Yes, you can study. We need to. We need to learn. Yes, we need to. But if you just look around, there's a lot of people need to be here tonight. A lot of people need to be here in the morning. So I'm thinking, so is there a pandemic we don't know about? I'm God knows I ain't wishing that on anybody. So what's going on? Well, people going, yeah, we know we got some people traveling. I get that tonight. But these are the kind of questions we need to ask ourselves. What are people doing? When did your habits change? So when we talk about coachability in this academic exercise, oh, you know scripture, you're ready to give somebody scripture, but what are we doing personally? See, people, the sermon that you see, the sermon that you see is where people will truly learn. That brother's here. That sister's here. And some saints of God will seek to just do things on their own, but they're not really engaged in local congregation. It's not effective. It's both and. It starts here. You know, I mentioned this last Sunday. But let me say it again for those who were not here. There's a lot of spiritual fugitives in the Lord's church. Y'all know what a fugitive is? One who goes from place to place. We got every child of God has to place membership somewhere. Amen. Why is that important? Because you're under a leadership. Why is that important? Because then we can track you. Why is that important? Then we can keep up with you. And so these next few months, it's going to be some pretty intentional phone calls to members who are on record here, but we don't see. They're all over the place. Because they like the praise team over here, <laughs> like the preaching over here. Stop that foolishness. And so we got to call people out. Are we coachable? We need to be willing to be taught by others. Second Timothy chapter one and verse five, we, we find in scripture that the young man, Paul, the young man, Timothy, is, is addressed by Paul. When I call to remember, it's the unfeigned, the genuine, sincere faith that is in thee. So he said, young man, you are sincerely faithful, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice. And I am persuaded that in thee also. You were taught, young man, <clears throat> you were taught by a grandmama. And a mama. So we got to be willing to be taught by others. I thank God for my, and that's how Rick and I came to the faith. We were taught by a grandmother and a mother. Viola Claypool, faithful sister in Christ. The late Viola Claypool, our grandmother, and certainly our mother. That's how we were taught, we were taught the gospel. So when I see this scripture, this is deeply personal with me. Everybody's got your, how you came to Christ is your story. But this is how we came to Christ. And let me tell you something. I thank God for that. I thank God for that. If you think about legacy, think about those who taught you. And may we always be coachable. It dwelt first in them, and now it's in you. And see, that's the continuous cycle. And we're going to get talk about that cycle of con continuity as well. So not only should we be willing to be taught by others, don't be the one where nobody can tell you anything. We need to be willing to study on our own. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, study to show thyself, to you show yourself approved unto God. A what? A workman. And he does not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. In other, other, in other words, handling right God's word. We got to know God's word. So one, as we think about our growth and personal development, am I in a position to be taught? Saints of God, as we go into the summer, yes, we're having vacation Bible school. Saints of God. And yes, some of you are going to be tasked with teaching. We're going to pick up some kids. I will go to Winn-Dixie and pick up a van load of kids if we need to. Amen. Some of y'all going to be with me. We ain't going to kidnap any kids. So then I'll be on the news with Larry. I ain't talking about that. We're going to find some kids. Little Larry ain't going to be the only little child here in vacation Bible school. 
That's going to be the plant next seed. Then from Vacation Bible School, uh, I'm looking at one of our deacons in the back. We're going to put those same kids and lads and leaders. Continuity of teaching. But we need people to be there to serve. Sister, you're here. Brother, you're here. Putting it into action. So be, studying on our own, we put these kids in a position to learn personally the word of God in some creative, artistic ways without compromising the word of God. That's part of study. And saints of God, with our new converts, we have a new convert fellowship, have our new converts, we want to shower them with love, get to know our new converts, but they need to be a new convert class. Brother Tyrone's diligent in teaching new convert class. That class should have about 15 people in it who are baptized this year, 15, not three. Because if you get off track early, then something can, some allurement comes along, you can choke it out, choke out the word, parable of the sword. Amen? This is what we're talking about. And I'm giving you the scripture, but I want to make sure you have the application as well. Tonight, we need to, as you think about your own growth and development, am I coachable? What am I learning? Am I in position to learn? Am I in the relay to make sure I'm getting what I need? Two, I need to study on my own, not just be taught by others. Brother Gail said, Brother Rick said, no, no, no. That's great. No, no, the Bible says more appropriately, but also study on your own. All right. But then once you are in position to learn from others, then you start studying on your own. Guess what we're going to do with you? You're going to start teaching. Amen. Well, it's like that resounding amen blew me away. That's the process. It's nothing. I mean, the basic, the theological application of this is as simple as a relay on the track, the endless relay. This never ends. We can always learn something. I'm a student. I'm a student. I'm a teacher. Student and teacher. And so when we talk about the turn to first Timothy chapter one and verse three, first Timothy, the first chapter <clears throat> and verse number three. First Timothy chapter one. And the verse is number three. The Bible says. Paul writing to his son in the faith, Timothy, again, contextually, as I besought. Thee to abide still at Ephesus. When I went into Macedonia, he said, basically, I urge you to stay to stay at Ephesus, in other words. And I went on to Macedonia, Paul speaking. Why, Paul, did you urge him to stay in Ephesus? That thou mightest charge some that teach no other doctrine. So I, I want you to stay there, Timothy. And you got to teach these brothers, teach the saints that they charge them. Don't you teach anything other than what you've been taught? Ain't that something? Do we need that today in 2024? And he goes on, verse four, neither give heed to fables. If people believe in fables, a um, fable is a lie. You guys remember Aesop's fables? I'm trying to think of some of them. I grew up with that big old book and, you know, woman living in a shoe or something like that. I'm trying to think of some of them, of them fables, uh, Larry from Ohio, that we grew up in school. People reading the book, Aesop's fables. Rumpelstiltskin, I think that's one of them. You know, hair, the woman, all the hair. I don't know these fables. That's why I don't, I don't believe them. But growing up, it was, it was entertaining, wasn't it? You know, all this stuff. And so people believe fables biblically, religious fables. So Paul says, you stay at Ephesus, Timothy. You teach them. Don't you speak, teach any other doctrine. Stay with the word. Don't give heed. Don't pay attention to fables and endless genealogies. They are children of God. They're like, well, can you show me more in history about the church of Christ? OK, what, what do you need to know? And this is part this is an ongoing conversation. What do you need to know? Well, there seems to be a gap in history. Where's the gap? Where, where, where's the gap? The, the church will never be destroyed. Daniel 2, 44. Matthew 16, 18, Jesus says the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Did the church cease to exist at some point? Did, did, we, did the Bible miss that? Y'all better be careful. See, then we again, because what's beautiful about history, but what's also we got to be careful with history. Some people make it his story. <laughs> they make it their own. You want to see a pretty picture? You want to see an old black and white picture of a church building in the 1700s? That's going to make you be more faithful. Some people are looking for that. You want to see a you want to if I found a picture of a church building in the 1700s, is that going to make some folks come back to Lord's church? Saints, that's a scary thing. I believe what the Bible says. Y'all believe what the Bible says? Daniel 2, verse 44, in the days of the, it said before it even happened, during the Roman Empire, it was prophesied 
that God's going to set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. Never includes the 1700s. Never includes the 1800s. Never includes every day since the church began. That's what we need to hold to. And that's why Paul told Timothy, now you stay in Ephesus. You don't you tell them to teach no other doctrine. Don't give heed to fables, endless genealogies. Here we go. This is what happens. If you talk to somebody, all they have are questions and they don't have scripture. Look at what the Bible says here. Verse four, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith. So do. Some of the conversations I'm having, what's seeking to have, but it's been a, a rat race with some saints that have fallen away. All I get is I got a lot of questions. I said, give me a scripture. No, I got a lot of questions. <laughs> give me a scripture. What scripture you need to we need to break down? We can study it together. Oh, your question is about this other stuff. Saints, I hope we can hold to sound doctrine. That's what Paul says right here. Because if you get on a rat, you get on you go into a spin cycle, you're gonna keep being in a spin cycle. So please remember, we need to be willing to be taught by others. That's part of the relay. We got to be willing to study on our own. That's part of our commitment in this relay, this endless relay. We need to be willing to teach, teach the truth and don't give heed to any foolishness. So as we pass that baton, we've already hit this scripture. As we pass the baton, don't quit. Be brave. That word quit ye like men, be brave, be courageous. And so as we close out, here we go. Passing the baton. I'm going to give you three scriptures. I'm putting them all on the screen to close us out. Larry, make your way, but walk slowly, brother. Take your time. Kiss a little Larry. Then rub his head. Then you walk slowly in that order, brother. And so he already up here. So as we, that's all right. As we pass the baton, remember the relay. As you're running the race, let's say Larry and I on a relay on a relay team. I'm running. I'm leg. They call them leg. Leg one, two, three, and four. I'm the first leg. I run the leg. I run. I give it to the second leg. I give it to Larry. He keeps running. He gives it to Eric. He keeps running. He gives it to. Brandon, I'm just going around the horn here. Then we give it to Tyrone. Everybody plays a role. What if one brother's like, what's that? What's that? No, bro, go. What's that? A baton? A stick? What you want me to do? Everybody, everybody else running. What I'm thankful for is in this race, we're not competing against each other. We're working together. But here's the key. I mentioned children. This is deeply personal. Our baby boy is about to graduate. He's done with school. He don't even got to go to school anymore. He's done in terms of his academic requirements. He's going to walk across the stage in the days to come. I guess Chantel will cry. I'll be there for her. And Lion is still a sin. <laughs> now, I wish he will cry. He may not be the only one. But here's the thing. Our closing thought today is, why do we need to keep running this race? Because of little Larry. Why to keep running this race with these kids we got here? Don't be the generation that stops teaching the truth. Leave it up to the kids. Like in the book of Judges, a generation didn't know God. Psalms 22, verse 30 and 31, a posterity shall serve him. So you talk about just those who come after him. That posterity shall, shall serve him. That legacy, it will be recounted of the Lord to the next generation they will come and declare his righteousness to a people who will be born that he has done this we need to leave a legacy keep teaching the truth there are those that taught me and i, I wish they i wish they could see me i'm being selfish i wish some of those brothers in ohio could see me now that little boy i knew that boy's big mouth he, thank god use it for the word of god wish my grandmama could see me now but she did what she could do Psalms 22 and 30, Psalm 71 and 18. Now also when I am old and gray headed, oh God, do not forsake me until, until I declare your strength to this generation. Let me run my lap, Lord. Please let me run my lap. Your power to everyone who is to come. It's not just right now, Brother Dowdell. These, I hope and pray these kids stand on the gospel. We have an obligation to them right now. People put it in us. We have an obligation to them. And saints, that's why we're going to keep pushing adults. Be a better example. Let's not, don't just send your kids. Bring your kids to Bible class. Let them grow up in a nurture and admonition, the teaching and instruction of the Lord. 
Psalm 78, four through six, our last one tonight. We will not hide them from their children, telling to the generation to come the praises of the Lord. Teach our kids and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. Tell them how good God is. Not what can, what can entertain them. We need to keep our kids engaged. Yes, but teach them the truth. Teach them the truth. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a few, a law in Israel, excuse me, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. We're going to have a parent meeting here in the days to come, in the weeks to come, I should say. Every parent has got a child. Come to the meeting and bring your child. So these kids going to be, we'll hear what we say to the parents. You love them, you need to have them here. You're taking them school shopping, getting school supplies, school clothes, uniforms, all that prep for school. And nothing wrong with that at all. What kind of prep are we doing here? Well, we're coming down your street, folks. And, and we got scripture with us. <laughs> it's personal. As a parent, you recognize that. You recognize that. The Bible says that they should make them known to their children that the generation to come might know them. The children who would be born, that they may arise and declare them to their children. What a Wait a minute. The relay continues. To your kids. And one day, Lord have mercy, Brandon may have a child. One day, years from now. It's another lesson. How beautiful is that? That is what the Bible, that's the endless relay. Don't let it stop with us. So I pray to God that those that are here and those who are here this lesson, keep running the race, stay on the relay, stay in our lane, keep passing that baton, be willing to take it, be willing to run with it, be willing to pass it. Every one of us has a responsibility to do that. All three. All three. So if you're not a child of God, and I'm looking around at this audience, we have all children of God here tonight. For those who may hear this, I'm going to look right into that camera. You need to be a Christian. The Bible, there's only one church in the Bible. The world may teach you that you can go attend the church of your choice, only one church in the Bible. Jesus Christ died for it. He purchased it with his own blood, and you have an opportunity to be a part of it. How do you become a member of the Lord's church, the body of Christ, the church of Christ? You must hear and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, Acts 15 and 7, that you see on your screen. You must hear and believe the death, burial, and resurrection. He died, he was buried, he rose again the third day. Having heard and believed that, you need to be willing to repent of your sins. Jesus says in Luke 13, 3 and 5, I tell you nay, but except you repent, personal, don't think about anybody else right now. Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. That word perish means death. Perish means spiritual death, spiritual separation from God. We're all going to die physically one day. We don't have to die spiritually. So you got to change your mind, having based on what you heard. Then you confess Christ to be the son of God. That Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8, Ethiopian man, went to worship in Jerusalem, reading Isaiah 53. But he wasn't a Christian. It ain't enough for you to say, I'm going to visit y'all. Come on in and visit, but you still need to be a Christian. Amen, saints. So once he was taught the word of God, Philip, God allowed Philip to join him. Taught him the gospel, began at that same scripture, taught him about Jesus. And when you teach somebody about Jesus, you got to teach baptism. Not sprinkling, not pouring, immersion in water. He said, after he was taught about Jesus, he said, see, here is water. What doth hinder me from being baptized? What's stopping me from being baptized? And he said, see, here is water. If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he made a confession. I believe that Jesus Christ, son of God, upon that confession, will baptize you fully immersed in water. Why? Acts 22, 16, your sins are washed away, all of them. Then you rise up to walk, live, to be faithful unto death. Run in the relay. What kind of relay is it? Endless relay. Perpetuity, it never ends. Propagate, cause to continue. Why? Because it's personal. We prepare and we want that perpetual leadership that God provides us. So the question is, do you know my Jesus? As we together stand, as we together sing, won't you come? Have you a heart that's weary, tending a load of care? Are you a soul that's seeking rest from the burden you bear? Do you know, oh my Jesus, do you know, oh 
my friend. Have you heard he loves you and that he will abide to the end? Who knows your disappointments? Who hears each time you cry? Who understands your heartaches? Who dries the tears from your eyes? Do you know, oh my Jesus, do you know, oh my friend, have you heard that he loves you and that he will abide till the end?